So, we're four and a half years after the release of Monster Hunter World, and there are still wonderful modded monsters being added to this game by our modding community. You know, too many to cover in fact, and quite honestly I love pretty much all of them as I appreciate many mods, whether they give an entirely new take on a monster or try and emulate an old one. Whether a mod decides to fit into the world of Monster Hunter like a glove, or decides to be completely game breaking and shatters the rules entirely, I could probably dedicate more videos analyzing quite a few more modded monsters in general. But to keep this short and sweet, in this video I'll cover just some of my recent favorites that I'll have ranked for fun. I decided not to include any of the Team Resurgence mods in this list, uh, because I feel like those mods should get their own videos talking about them, so this video will look at some of the other more recent monster mods. At number 5, the Azure Blaze Devil Joe. Myself, I've never been a fan of fighting Devil Joe, the model I've always found a little annoying, especially with how active his legs are. Being a Dual Blades player, it can be hard to touch him, but even I could heavily appreciate this take on Devil Joe. Originally, Devil Joe is a pretty physical monster. Savage Devil Joe gives him this dragon element fog thingy. This mod turns that fog into blue fire and thus changes the core of this monster, which we'll see with quite a few mods in this video. Azure Blaze Devil Joe is bestowed the power of blue fire as well as what seems to be the power of Xeno Jiva, which may be fitting because you fight him in the confluence of fates. With this, you'll notice he has a blue fire aura around him which intensifies when he's enraged. Most of his new moves will be that of a blue fire. That fits the environment. His blast attacks look great as they luminesce among the crystal arena of the Eldritch Recess. Amongst his new blue fire, he also has Xeno Jiva like attacks as well. For instance, when he slams his foot down, it has a Xeno Jiva like explosion that will happen about a second or two afterwards, which adds a level of hesitancy that you have to take into account with your approach. Because although the hitbox for the explosion itself is really small, if it hits you, it can be instant death. He has another move that shares the animation with the Savage Devil Joe. He moves his head from right to left, but instead of a Dragon Blight Smog, which would be the usual attack, it's a blue fire that explodes in multiple different spots when it lands. His Nova is especially impressive. The build up of this move is actually pretty creative. The red tint fills your screen as the impending blast gets bigger. While the Nova looks great, the move design is also being helpful. Teaching you when to evade or jump out of the way as the screen gets more red, this is great move design. It puts you in the state of awe, but it also shows you how to deal with it, or in this sense, when to deal with it. It has a sense of intuition. The first time he did this Nova, he didn't have to tell me when to dodge or dive. I could figure it out. The new move design, the location, and the overall deviant design and feel of the monster are why Zerblaze Devil Joe is one great mod to check out and why it's 5 on this list. Now for number 4, probably the most well-known mod of this group, Devil Gene Nergigante. He was a perfect package of a modded fight in almost every way. This mod, taking him to the secluded valley with possibly the best soundtrack for the mod possible, the Devil Kazumi theme, is a song that matches the fight and tone and tempo and will amplify the badassness of the fight even if you are to perish. Devil G Nergigante is a lot like Arc Tempered Nergigante as far as his pace and power, if you remember him from Monster Hunter World. He attacks fast and hard and has a few facets to his moves that might surprise you. He is like if you took Nergigante and fed him Dragon Element steroids, or as the mod page describes it, the Devil Gene Nergigante is a Nergigante that has had cells containing what is only known as the Devil's Power fused with its own. It carries strength unlike any others of its kind, and becomes especially dangerous as the power within is unleashed. I would say that sounds easy, right? You'll also notice if you observe closely that his chest all the way through his tail and his wings are pulsating red the entire fight. This pulsating also gets faster as well as he gets an, a dragon electric aura when he's enraged. A few of his attacks will add a dragon element explosion which will create an extra evade you'll have to pull off after he lands a move. He also has a new kind of Nova where it combines both Nergigante and Ruiner Nergigante dive bombs. Whether intentional or not, in my heart and many others, more than likely, who are lucky enough to actually play this mod, Devil Gene Nergigante is a true successor to Nergigante. Although the modders probably didn't intend it to be that way, this fight is probably far more what people wanted than what we got with Ruiner Nergigante. For number 3, we have The Flame Puki Puki. The Flame Puke Puke 
It was one of my favorite recent mods that I felt got overlooked without good reason. This mod does what I had hoped eventually someone could do, which is make a badass Pookie Pookie fight. Many of his new moves are pretty similar to his old ones, just with fire, but the quality of the effects and the visuals are really on point here. Seeing Pookie Pookie shoot fire across the map and stage will make you wonder as to why Capcom didn't make this version of the monster instead. Coral Pookie Pookie is great, but visually, Coral Pookie Pookie has nothing on fire. All of that, as well as a great soundtrack, the modder successfully turned Pookie Pookie into an epic fight. His transformation into Enraged Mode is also pretty epic, engulfing him in Fire Aura as well as having added some wind blowback on his landings, the transition fits very well. He's also got this awesome new Split Fire attack. Three Fire Bombs. As well as this move, where he might uh, typically engulf the area in water in a circular pattern, now he's doing it with fire, and it looks terrific. His new moves are dangerous and hit hard, as well as have a bigger area of effect. And of course, apply Fire Blight. Please check this mod out, and make sure to bring your fireproof mantle. Now for number two, we have the Stygian Brute Tigerex. Uh, this bad boy could easily be number one on any list. There are so many new, creative, and flashy moves Stygian Brute Tigerex has, uh, it's hard to put them all down. Basically all of his moves have been overhauled, which shouldn't be too surprising since he has Stygian element. The thing with Tigerex is that he's never been a blast or aura monster, which means he doesn't shoot beams, cause explosions, or anything like that. The most he causes in that realm are possibly his sonic bursts, otherwise you would consider him a completely raw or melee type of monster. Adding a Stygian element to him means changing the raw ethos of the monster. But boy does it work in this context, fighting him in the El Dorado caverns is also much appreciated because it's rare that a mod takes us there. You'll fight him mostly, if not completely, in the second area of Kolf Taroth's map. Though I had one occasion unrecorded that actually went to a different area, the third or fourth. Not actually sure what causes that, but it might be a timer. Also, there will be a turf war no matter what. It's inserted about a few minutes into the fight. This is not only special because it's a turf war with Stygian Brute Tigrex, but I extra appreciate how easy it is for the player to get this kind of treat. The monster just pops in, has a turf war, and pops out, and all you have to do is sit back and enjoy the show. I'll be playing the highlight video in the background. He's got so many new moves that while using the Tiger X's animations for things that would traditionally be roars or rock throwing, they're now being used for Stygian-like blasts or beams and all kinds of other delayed explosions. While Flame Puke Puke is amazing, many of his moves have a similar functionality as in their similar takes on Puke Puke's moves and can be dealt with in a similar way. This is certainly not the case for Stygian Brute Tiger X, as all of these ranged dragon attacks call for you to learn an entirely different moveset. He also seems to have uh, different tendencies. Uh, he has much less of a propensity to run around everywhere, instead of opting to stand in place to shoot his blasts. Which I appreciate, because Tiger X to me has always been more annoying since many of his common moves turn his entire body into a hitbox, and he loves to run around so much. That is definitely much less the case when you're fighting Brute Stygian Tiger X. This mod shouldn't be your favorite if you're a fan of minimalism. The DR Kuzu is a fantastic mod of Tiger X as well as that combines what we already know about Tiger X but adds a bit of a blast element to shake things up. I would say that's a little bit more minimal than uh, Stygian Tiger X. Stygian Brute Tiger X is such a prime example of an unrestrained, hardcore overhaul of a monster. You'll either love it or hate it more than likely. I have to give mad props to this mod, this one is really terrific. It would be number one if not for... Well, you know, wait, uh, uh, hold up a minute. I'll have to say, you know, fighting all these modded monsters, I feel pretty good, man. I feel pretty strong. I'm taking them all out without feigning, I'm adapting, I'm, I'm killing them pretty quick. I'm not speedrunning them, but no, I'm, I'm getting pretty freaking good at this game. I'm not sure anyone can really take me down. Bakakoma. Kyo dai sugiru. 
砕かれたそうかうん行くぞ And finally, the last, but certainly not least, of this group. My number one modded monster, the Humiliator, the Humbleizer, the Hellblade Glavinus, the Deathest of Blades. This was one of the most difficult, yet realistically doable mods I have ever played, and as a pretty good player, because I often feel like Saitama, that is why I have it as my recent favorite, because it gave me the insane test I have been looking for from a modded monster. Initially testing this mod's hardest difficulty with a modded god tier weapon that gives you 10k extra defense, I would still get one-shotted by many of his moves that are lightning fast. Many of his moves are combo, some of which are fair while some aren't. The end quote unquote lag of his moves is by far the hardest part. You would think that with his moves this fast and deadly, he might give you a chance to get another shot in, but many times this isn't the case. Even with dual blades, usually the best I could tap him with is a dirt demon flurry or a two-fold slash. Going for a six-fold will get me killed quite often. To my knowledge, you only get one knockdown the entire fight. Which, for those of you who are a fan of the classic games, that kind of thing will sound very familiar. He also has a move that reminds me of a Crimson Fatalis move uh, from the mod, uh, a shot of fire onto the ground that sticks you to it. Although it's an uncommon move, this is incredibly hard to avoid. Even with Evade Window 5 and the best time to evade, I could still get stuck to it. After this move lands, you can do your best to spam dodge and maybe that'll help you get out of it sometimes. But his combo off of this move is entirely random. He could land this on you and do one of his rare cooldown moves where he rips his blade from his teeth and does it spin and kill you. Sometimes he'll slam down and kill you immediately. He has two main combo moves. Two consecutive tail slams and two 360 tail spins. No matter what, except for maybe a Divine Blessing proc, getting hit with either of these will kill you. There's also not much time in between these two death moves, and there's not a lot of end lag after the combo is over with. In time, you'll begin to realize that it's not enough to run away from these moves or to Superman dive away from these. Lest you will not finish the fight in 50 minutes and be playing too defensively, instead you'll have to learn the timing and use these opportunities to maximize your damage output. Hitting the monster while staring death in the face is the only way. It's insane to think about, but first seeing this Hellblade's moves, I would just dodge away or dive and be happy I survived to see another day. But after enough of these fights where you see he can sometimes string 6 or 10 of these kill moves together consecutively, you realize that you must fight him, even when he's charging his tailspin that's lightning fast and can kill you instantly, one shot you. So when you change your mindset and understand the timing of this tailspin, you can actually get excited because these become the best opportunities to land damage in this fight, and ultimately break his tail. If you do manage to break his tail, I do believe it slightly decreases the range, I have no idea if it lessens the damage. Despite all of his danger, over time I had begun to realize that this fight is actually doable. Once you throw away all your defensive skills and solely opt for evade window, you can begin to analyze that many of his moves aren't lingering hitboxes. And more so, that there is a rhythm to this fight, a very fast one, perhaps the fastest I've ever seen. But if you keep up and keep focus, it becomes possible. If you lose your focus, even for a second, you will die. Even with evade window 5 and tool specialist 5 giving you that evade mantle and temporal, the constant threat of having a certain number of moves kill you instantly means that in order to win against the Hellblade Glavinus, you must keep your cool. So after 8 hours of streaming, initially laughing off this mod is impossible and silly, but catching an inkling that it may be possible, I had my run. I got my first knockdown ever against him. I had my double fortify proc'd for 15 minutes. I broke his tail and for the last 15 minutes I held my breath. I had begun to see skulls, with my heart pounding I had to remain diligent and stay focused, and thus with a six-fold slash, no mantles, and exhausted mental retention, Hellblade Glavinus EX fell, and I felt the true thrill of battle I haven't felt in a long time. This mod is best for truly exceptional hunters. So to summarize this mod, the design of this monster looks just like Hellblade from the past games. Moreover, the main comments I read from the modder's page, besides how difficult the fight was, of course, was how much this emulates Hellblade Glavinus from the old games. 
The modders truly brought this monster to life and back into Iceborne. A true gift. Thank you to the modders. Also, there are quite a few versions of this thing. Uh, for starters, there's the full contents version, which has you fight in the Teostra's part of the Elder's Recess, and that's the one I'm covering. But there's also a 2.0 version, which I won't be covering, but also should get a look. You may have to download that mod separately, because it's not a part of the full contents version, but that has a lot of different moves uh, from the full contents one, which I, have, which I find pretty fun. So it's worth getting on its own. I wouldn't say full contents is just an objective upgrade, it's just different from 2.0. What I'm covering is the full contents version, which has at least six difficulties for this fight. G rank, one through five, an event difficulty, and an EX difficulty. The other difficulties provide wonderful options for practice and experience. In short, if you want to fight the monster and enjoy it without stressing too much, the lower ones will be perfect. I wouldn't blame you. Because this fight is such a nightmare, the lower difficulties make it so there's more end lag and the moves are slower as well as it hits much less hard. Be aware that EX, if many of these moves land, they will straight up kill you if you're playing the lower difficulties, they won't. In conclusion, like I said at the start of the video, currently we're four years after the release of Monster Hunter World, with Sunbreak releasing soon. The modding community has done a spectacular job, both eclectically through individual efforts and collaboratively with group projects. Providing this passionate community with so many monsters to fight and mods to enjoy, both original creations and recreations have been welcome. Mods that cover all difficulties and archetypes, from simple retextures to full monster overhauls, the modding community for this game has exceeded all expectations I think one would have. For creating the most difficult challenges imaginable for the most hardcore of players to creating spectacles that uniquely combine multiple assets already in the game. All I want to say is thank you from the bottom of my heart to anyone who's enjoyed my coverage of this game as well as to those wonderful selfless modders that have put in untold hours of passionate work into the game without promise of glory or compensation. I and many players will hopefully always appreciate the work you have done. As long as quality mods come out for the Monster Hunter games, I hope to continue covering them. I'm looking forward to Rise mods, but we'll always try and be ready to do Iceborne ones as well. Of course, we cannot forget about Sunbreak and future games. Thank you all for coming with me on this journey. If you could, please subscribe and leave a comment down below. I would love constructive criticism. How did I do? What could I do better? Do you enjoy this kind of content, or should I just shut my mouth and stick to playing? Anyhow, thanks for watching.